we actually have a player that if you're talking to me two years ago, he is number two on this list. Um, talking to me three years ago, he's number two on this list. Four years ago, he's number two on this list. If you get what I'm saying. Um, but we have Paul George here. He was a third overall in MVP voting two, as little, little as two years ago. And he's not even third overall on our shooting guard list. He's number five. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I mean, this is a guy who, when we talked about Pascal Siakam, we felt like the bubble hurt his ranking a lot. <laughs> and clearly, this is something that happened to Paul George. It too. didn't just hurt his ranking. It hurt his reputation. Yeah, I mean, when you he came out in a recent interview and he said something along the lines of, "Oh, I'm going to return to my MVP season," and people are just like, "What do you mean?" Like they forget that two years ago he put up 28, eight and a half, and he did yeah. it on a very efficient clip. And he played one of the best defensively defensive players in the league as well. Yeah, definitely. Paul George always one of the best defensive players. Him and Kawhi. Yeah, and that's why they went out and got him, right? They thought it was just the absolute perfect match in terms of the backcourt slash wing guys being able to defend any and everyone um, obviously especially guys like LeBron James and it just last year didn't happen especially in the playoffs um, I don't have his playoff stats off the top of my head but if it did, three games I want to say maybe 14 points per game if I'm not mistaken um, it just did not look pretty for Paul George at any point in that playoff run maybe one or two games were okay but I don't know what happened to playoff P because when it was with Indiana, we always just raved about Paul George come playoff time. Especially against uh, against LeBron back in the day when he was with Miami. And yeah, those, those Paul George was young. Yeah, those years were something to look forward to. And last like last year, it was a, it was laughable how bad he was. Not only on the fact how bad he was, but the fact how he was just in so de not so much denial on how bad he was doing. He just wanted to keep shooting and just wanted to get out of the funk. And he, well, that's what, that's what a player of that level is supposed to do, right? Yeah, but it just wouldn't happen. And I feel like that's why it hurts him so much because we know between all of the guys left, he's the best defensive player. Um, and he has the capability to be at least better than the worst offensive player of this bunch. But oh. of the bunch, he was the worst offensive player last year. He still averaged 26 and 4 in the playoffs. Yeah. 20 points, 6 rebounds, and 4 assists. Still not a bad. And he still got 1.5 steals per game. Um, he actually shot the ball decently well. 34% from three, not the greatest there, but he didn't actually play as bad as what we think he did. It's just that whole team collapsed. Yeah. That whole team collapsed. Like that. That three games in a row to Denver, that made him look bad. And it, it really made the whole organization look laughable. And to me, the biggest, one of the biggest reasons why George went down was, yes, he, he, well, he did, didn't have that MVP level year last year. He still played really good defense, but he didn't have it offensively at least. But to me, it's how he handled this offseason. Like, he didn't come out of that bubble with that then like, rubbing off in the fans' minds that I'm going to get, I'm going to go back, I'm going to get better, I'm going to improve from this. He came out of it being like, I am the best anyways. Fucking okay, Doc Rivers, who needs him? Uh, he was holding me back. Uh, and, like, he, he has to admit that he had a bad year. He has to admit that he does have the potential to become a top three, top five player on this planet. But right now, he's not even in the top 10 conversation. So he's, he's really got to suck it up mentally and go back and just put in the work and show us that he is that top player. Because him just talking shit and saying all the stuff he's going to say right now is just hurting his reputation. And it's going to hurt his game. Yeah, and it's almost too like... I understand that Paul George could definitely shoot the ball post All-Star break as well, shot 46% from the three. But at the same time, if this is a guy playing shooting guard, he's 6'8". Like, there's no reason that Paul George shouldn't be just bodying up every single shooting guard he's matched with, getting down low, bumping him a few times, and doing a turnaround midway shot, where, like, it's the easiest game. Like, he should turn himself into Carmelo Anthony on the offensive end because the guys he's playing are going to be so much smaller than him based on where he's going to line up. And I just don't think he's going to do it. But if he could, he could definitely have another 20 to 30 point game per year. Um, I just, I wish he used that element of his game more. I don't see him really getting to that 28 level anymore. Not on that team. That team just has too many scores. That takes away from his, from his overall um, shot, shot attempts. 
it's just, his usage goes down. But I think if if he's if he can get to twenty three or twenty four and still provide a top level defense, him and Kawhi like they if they if they beat Denver last year, we're having a different conversation. We're having a different conversation. If they beat Denver in five games, um, they go into the, the Western Conference Finals against LA rested. This is this is not the conversation we're having right now. No, but it, it's reality. It's this is where we are right now. And until they prove it to us that they can be a little bit more level-headed and not lose three games in a row like that, do you know who would not lose three games in a row like that? LeBron James. LeBron James. No, and I mean, with that being said, too, a lot of people obviously where the whole playoff performance, like you said, in total might not be that bad. It's really the fact of a lot of people remember that game seven where he did shoot four for 16. They did blow that lead, a pretty substantial lead, too. Um, and he only had 10 points. He had five turnovers. I mean, if you take away the, the turnovers to points, he had five points in a game seven deciding factor game and they're that whole series i mean he puts up 10 points uh, and then three games before that he also puts up 10 points where he puts up 26 and 33 in between but like you can't have out of four games you put up 10 points and expect to be more than like you said a top five guy at your position the fact he's even top five um speaks to wonders how good he normally is because like you can't put paul george less than this honestly he's too good but based on like you said the consistency factor the factor that he's obviously not the number one on the team anymore um it really just isn't going to allow him really to move above any of these guys anytime soon i don't think either i think i don't think he's going to have a better year than any of these guys obviously based on his ranking but i'm with you also in the fact that i don't think next year is going to be above these guys i just wish that he slowed down his offensive game more like i said and just posted guys up because like when you're six eight at shooting guard like, like I said, like he could shoot over anyone at that position, and I don't understand why he takes so many threes. Not saying he takes an astronomical amount, but he'd rather pull up and take a three than play in the post, I feel. I didn't like that Clipper system last year either. Um, for me, and you're, you're talking that he, we lost, he, lo he lost opportunities by going to the Clippers playing with Kawhi. The year before, he put up 28.3, 28 points per game, third in MVP voting. You know who his running mate was? Russell Westbrook. Yep. Like, everyone's shitting on Russell Westbrook these days. Um, Dave Ball is a horrible player. Guess what? People in Washington, they like him. He's not that bad of, he's not that bad of a guy. And as much as he does take a really high percentage of shots, doesn't, take, doesn't shoot the three-pointer very well, it just goes to show that his drives and dishes that he was able to do with Paul George made Paul George into the best player he ever was in his career. He only ever had two other seasons besides that season above 21 points per game. 21 points, which is what he had last year, 21 and a half points, is actually more than his career average. That's all we should ever expect from Paul George. Put him beside an amazing playmaker, maybe a different story. They don't have a playmaker on that team. They do iso ball purely. They, don't, they literally do not even have a point guard on that team. That team is just not well built for Paul George. They're well built defensively. They're built to destroy him defensively. And I hope that works for him because, like, this offensively, we're not going to see the best version of Paul George on that Clippers team. Definitely. I mean, his his career averages do take a bit of a dip because the first five years he did only have over 20 points per game once. Um, he has had over 23 points per game um, two times before. He only had one year that was under tw uh, 22 in the last five years, I believe. But yeah, so not a guy who's consistently is believed to be um, a 28 point per game guy. But like you said, if he could put up that 24 about a game like he did in Indiana around 23.7, 24, Definitely, all the Clippers should be able to ask for him based on who else they have. Not completely, but his defense should actually put him higher on the list alone. Um, but it just, that it's a bit of recency bias uh, that that last game, time we seen Paul George play. But it is what it is. We we witnessed it, and uh, it imprinted on our brains. Definitely. Um, well, moving on from 